Breaking news tonight, Hurricane Hannah makes landfall in Texas moments ago. Strong winds lashing the coast, fears of massive flooding. This is Mother Nature's stay-at-home order for all of us. The resort town directly in its path, and a second hurricane ripping across another state tonight. Shut down now, the new call from experts who say COVID is out of control and only a nationwide shutdown can stop it. Hospitalizations nearing record levels, and what we're learning about how long symptoms last, even in mild cases. The school system that reopened this week now has its first confirmed case of coronavirus. Shots fired in protest over the shooting of Breonna Taylor in Louisville, while clashes in Portland turn even more violent overnight. And the football stars surprise announcement. I think that um, there, there's something a little bit bigger than football that's happening right now. What he's doing instead of playing that could save lives. This is NBC Nightly News with Jose diaz Bellart. Good evening. Right in the middle of a pandemic, Hurricane Hannah is blasting its way into southern Texas tonight. The Category 1 storm just made landfall. It is the first Atlantic hurricane to make landfall this season, delivering punishing winds and a dangerous storm surge. Corpus Christi right in the bullseye as the region also deals with a COVID-19 emergency. And in the Pacific, another hurricane, Douglas, is bearing down on Hawaii tonight. NBC's Sam Brock is following it all. Tonight, Hurricane Hannah unleashing its wrath. It's just like a ghost town, basically. From Brownsville to Galveston, flash flood watches as the first Atlantic storm of the season dumps 6 to 12 inches of rain along the Texas Gulf Coast. Don't ever underestimate the power of water and what it can do. It's not forgiving. Flood water already filling up streets. The twin threats of storm surge and heavy rain prompting concerns about rescues. Chelsea Torres from our affiliate KRIS is on North Padre Island. Since Hannah has become a hurricane, she's really strengthened tremendously. You can already tell just by the winds intensifying and the rain increasing, the storm surge has been something that we've been watching heavily and it's become more aggressive. Texas, already a state under under siege from COVID-19 with nearly 380,000 cases statewide. Just because a hurricane comes to the state does not mean that COVID-19 disappears. Now, local governments fear Hannah could wipe out electricity, forcing COVID patients using breathing machines out of their homes. We've done everything that we could to, leading up to this to make sure that we have plenty of PPE. Anybody that's going to be moved is going to be treated as if they have COVID. At the same time, waters are surging in Texas. Hawaii prepares for Hurricane Douglas, expected to weaken to a Category 1 when it arrives Sunday. We uh, do anticipate a significant wind, rain, a flooding impact. Across two oceans in the Gulf of Mexico, a critical test in the collision of coronavirus and storm season. Sam Brock, NBC News. And let's bring in meteorologist David Yeomans from our Austin affiliate KXAN. David, you're on North Padre Island. How strong is it right now? Jose, the level of the ocean behind me here is five feet higher than it would normally be with huge waves crashing on top of that. You can see these waves pounding against this section of concrete seawall. Really the only thing protecting this section of building behind me from significant damage. We're hearing more than hours of hurricane force wind gusts here are actually causing significant damage just down the beach from us. A popular fishing pier, part of it at least, has collapsed into the ocean. Now let's talk about the track. This storm making landfall with 90 mile per hour winds on an unpopulated part of Padre Island and exit South Texas by tomorrow morning. Jose, back to you. David Yeomans in North Pilot Island. Take care of yourself. Thank you for being with us. And let's turn to the coronavirus pandemic, which shows no sign of slowing down. Now a large group of prominent doctors is calling for a new national shutdown. NBC's Joe Fryer has the latest. The fatal grasp of coronavirus felt from coast to coast, with the nation's daily death toll topping 1,000 four days straight. Today, South Carolina set a new single-day record for deaths with 80. Dr. Anthony Fauci says hard-hit states may need to take more action. You don't necessarily have to go all the way back to a complete shutdown, but you certainly have to call a pause and maybe even a backing up a bit. 
But in a letter to the Trump administration, more than 500 top health experts are going further. Shut it down now, they say, calling for another national closure. We need to stop taking these kinds of you know, half, half actions. We need bold action now to save lives. Otherwise, we're just going to keep going through this cycle over and over again. The CDC now says even mild coronavirus cases can linger, with more than a third of patients with moderate symptoms still feeling the effects up to three weeks after testing positive. What's even more troubling is that a number of these patients were very young, 18 to 34 years old, who also stated that they were healthy otherwise and still experienced symptoms weeks later. As schools nationwide figure out how to reopen, the virus is already impacting a district that this week became one of the first to resume classes. In Alcoa, Tennessee, officials say a person tested positive for COVID at the middle school, but they won't confirm if it's a student, teacher, or staff member. Anyone who has been in close contact Contact will be notified, the district says, and have to quarantine for up to 14 days. If our numbers get um, what we feel like dangerously high, or if some of our students or staff start getting sick in large quantity, then we will go all virtual. To slow the virus's spread, more states are now requiring masks, with Minnesota's mandate kicking in today. It's just so easy, and it could help a lot of people. So. If you don't, it's it's just being selfish. Well, Indiana's mandate starts Monday. Their importance underscored by two children who lost their dad, Jeff Munn, to COVID-19. You're not pro-American if you're not wearing a mask. You're pro you. You're not treating your yeah. other Americans with respect. And Joe Fryer joins us from Los Angeles. Joe, the mayor speaking out again today about shutdowns. Yeah, the mayor says right now there are no plans for any further restrictions after the governor last week closed down a number of businesses statewide. Jose. Joe Fryer in Los Angeles, thank you. President Trump's team was back on Capitol Hill today working on a new relief bill. It comes as key government benefits that have aided millions of unemployed Americans during the pandemic expire this weekend. Kelly O'Donnell has late details. Rolling up to Capitol Hill for a working Saturday, the president's top negotiators on the next COVID relief package expect to present a Republican plan Monday. I think the president has been very clear. He wants to make sure that the American people have what they need. A critical issue, how much will the federal government add to state unemployment benefits? as the $600 emergency payments to 20 million jobless Americans expire within days. Today, Secretary Mnuchin called for a different formula. We're not going to use taxpayer money to pay people more to stay home. We've talked about approximately 70 percent wage replacement. Mnuchin said he is talking with Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who is fighting to extend the $600 payments. Everybody wants to talk about being family friendly. Let's not squawk about $600. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, mother of two, Mercedes Borges, is one of an estimated 12 million American renters who face a new threat of eviction. Defendant is nine months past due on rent. At risk now because the federal hold on evictions just expired so landlords can start the clock on legal proceedings. Mercedes is worried about protecting her children. They mean so much to me. I know they don't mean anything to my landlord, but they mean something to me. Today, the vice president visited Massachusetts, where more than 500,000 are receiving unemployment benefits. Pence talked up a new relief package to the governor. We're going to make sure that the families in this state and businesses in this state uh, and, uh, and, and your administration have the resources to continue to move forward. Kelly, what else could be in the package? Well, expect getting cash in people's hands. Remember those $1,200 direct payments this spring? Another round is likely. The big question is how soon? Negotiations could take weeks. Jose? Kelly O'Donnell at the White House, thank you. Protests in Kentucky turned violent today when shots were fired as demonstrators, many armed, squared off there. Cal Perry is in Louisville with more. Night in Louisville, tensions are running high. After gunshots were fired at a protest downtown, leaving three people wounded. According to police who quickly released the surveillance video, there was an accidental gunshot by a member of the armed left-wing black militia group, NFAC. 
NFAC and Black Lives Matter demonstrators today facing off with white right-wing militias. We're here because we want to make sure there's way too many people here. We just want to help make sure it stays peaceful for them to do what they're doing. They have their rights, First and Second Amendment. That's what we're about, Constitution, you know, and let them do their thing. And uh, that's pretty much why we're here. So you're here for security? That's it. For everybody. Doesn't matter who's who. We're here for everybody. They're demanding justice for Breonna Taylor, the 26-year-old woman who was fatally shot in a police raid on her home in Louisville in March. We want to reform the police so it doesn't happen again. We don't just want justice this one time. We want to change it so it doesn't continue to happen. There was also unrest overnight in Portland, where federal officers took down protesters using tear gas and pepper balls. Thousands jammed the streets after a judge denied Oregon's request for a restraining order against federal officers who've been in the city for weeks. Last night, a group of military veterans joined protesters to create a, quote, wall of veterans, standing with their hands clasped behind their backs and holding Black Lives Matter signs. This all comes as President Trump this week doubled down on his vow to send federal law enforcement to other cities. And Cal joins us now from Louisville. Cal, are officials expecting this to go into the night? You know, right now, both the police and the protesters have withdrawn from the downtown area. Unclear at this point if that was pre-negotiated. Jose? Cal Perry in Louisville, thank you. John Lewis was remembered today in his hometown of Troy, Alabama, where family and friends gathered to honor the congressman and icon of the civil rights movement. It was the start of six days of memorials for Lewis to be held in Selma, Washington, D.C., and finally Georgia. Still ahead tonight, working the fields and putting their lives on the line, the workers hard hit by the pandemic. Also, he's traded the line of scrimmage for the front lines, the NFL star answering a higher call. Back now with our series, Inequality in America. And tonight we look at a group of people who have been hit especially hard by the COVID pandemic, mainly Latino workers in the vineyards of California. Gotti Schwartz has more on this. In California's wine country, Armando Ceja is checking temperatures before a morning of tending to the grapes. Lupita Ramirez Pacheco has worked the Ceja family vines for over a decade and seen the region rocked by earthquakes and forest fires. But this season, the biggest fear is COVID-19. Y vivo con una familia que acaba de nacer una bebé, entonces voy a tener más precaución. She says that, yeah, she says she's scared because she lives in a family where they've just had a, a small baby, and so they're trying to take every precaution they can. While social distancing here is manageable among the small crews and rows spread eight feet apart, CEO Amelia Ceja, once a vineyard worker herself, is more worried about workers living in cramped conditions. This pandemic has exposed really the need to have more affordable housing. The workers that allow us to make these world famous wines uh, need to be able to live where they work. Latinos here have been hit the hardest by COVID-19, only 35% of the population, but accounting for 57% of all cases in Napa County. And the lack of affordable housing forcing some, like Gabriel Lopez Santiago, and a van full of workers he lives with, to make a two hour commute each day. He says that they live in Fairfield because it's a lot cheaper for the rent than it is here in Napa. In Napa, where they work, the cost of living is among the highest in the state, where only 9% of housing is deemed affordable. Arnulfo Garcia and his wife Dina live in Napa, and the money they bring in barely covers. The rent. How much is the rent for, for an apartment? Uh, $2,500. $2,500. Sí. $2,500. Sí. Eso es para dos cuartos? Para dos cuartos. For two bedrooms. They get sick, there's no paid time off, no place to isolate, and they say it's likely their whole family would become infected with no other place to go. He says that when they're in groups, he doesn't know who's got it, who doesn't have it, so that there's a lot of fear. The county has tried alleviating the housing crisis with three group living facilities set up before the pandemic to bunk field workers two to a room, but now two of the three facilities have seen clusters of confirmed cases. And as harvest season approaches, growers and workers alike worry that more outbreaks will jeopardize their livelihoods and their lives. Gotti Schwartz, NBC News, Napa. We're back in a moment with a tough decision made by an NFL superstar who's also a doctor. 
Tonight, an NFL superstar is opting out of the season to focus on something bigger than football. Here's Kevin Tibbles. From the front line on the field to fighting on the front lines against a deadly opponent. I think that um, there, there's something a little bit bigger than football that's happening right now, and if I can contribute, I think I should. Kansas City Chiefs' Laurent Duvernay-Tardif, who hails from Canada, won the Super Bowl last year as an offensive guard. But he is also a doctor and will sit this season out to help save lives at a long-term care facility in his home province of Quebec. I'm so happy and proud. Proud, says Coach Andy Reid, because Duvernay-Tardif is a dedicated doctor. They're givers, man, they, they, and, and they're not the takers, so they're, they're very humble people. Uh, that want to help you and heal you. Quarterback Patrick Mahomes says the entire squad supports him. He wants to make sure he's doing something to make the world a better place, and I believe that he is doing that. In announcing it on Twitter, Duvernay Tardif said, I cannot allow myself to potentially transmit the virus in our communities simply to play the sport that I love. If I am to take risks, I will do it caring for patients. The 29-year-old is a graduate of McGill Medical School in Montreal and is taking advantage of an agreement between the NFL and its players that allows them to opt out of the 2020 season because of the pandemic. Training camps are slated to open on time with the season beginning in September. I'm here more you know, to help, to support, to contribute in that time of crisis. Now this Super Bowl champ will be wearing scrubs instead of his Chiefs jersey. Kevin Tibbles, NBC News. And coming up, life-saving tips thanks to a movement making a big difference to some who are struggling. There's good news tonight about some much-needed help now getting to hard-hit folks, all thanks to a woman who never forgot how a little kindness and a little something extra could change someone's life. In restaurants across America, you're kidding. Acts of no. kindness yes. caught on camera. This is a prank. Oh, wow. No. What? It's Every part of a movement dreamt up by Lexi Caney Burke, inspired by her own experience. You yourself have, have worked in the service industry. Yes, I have. Uh, about three years ago in Nashville, one night I got tipped a thousand dollars, and I really needed it. So when she saw how hard the COVID crisis hit restaurants, she asked her social media followers on TikTok, now almost 300,000 strong, to join her in a challenge to raise money for them online. I thought, why don't we pay it forward by tipping a server who's been out of work? So I, I set a small goal and it blew up. And with donations from just one cent to $200, since May, she's raised over $18,000. Surprising servers and other essential workers. No way. Absolutely. More than $600 for Danielle Melvin, working at a Baltimore cheesecake factory. She's a mom of three with an important message for other mothers struggling right now. Blessings come at the time that you least expect it and just keep hope. Lexi's movement is motivating others, too, like Ohio Community Outreach Director Dan Pugh. He started a similar fundraising campaign. It's really special to be able to give back to these folks that are, are risking their health and, you know, providing for their families. Give you a tip of $650. He shared a big tip with Virginia Beach server Aubrey Suckerbuck, recently out of work for more than two months. That just reminded me that there's still wholehearted, genuine people in this world. Oh my God, thank you. She split the tip with her co-workers. They helped me at my lowest. During these difficult times, the video's going viral for all the right reasons. I hope that someone sees this and is reminded that we are all in this together and we all should love and support one another. Lexi has tipped more than 20 servers and frontline workers and hopes to keep doing it as long as she can. That's NBC Nightly News for this Saturday. I'm Jose diaz Bullard. Thank you for the privilege of your time and good night. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.